Hey, welcome back to my channel. Got a flywoo stack here. So my first, uh, my first time buying a flywoo stack, 16 by 16 to go into this build I'm gonna do on the channel. And this should be a really cool build. So if you're not subscribed, you might want to. I'm gonna do a full setup, I mean the whole nine. Uh, so this is the Armitan Tadpole 3. And it's 16 by 16. And I guess there's an adapter board you can purchase separately to do a whoop size board. Um, it does not do 20 by 20. And as you know, if you watch my channel, I, I mostly deal with 20 by 20 stacks. So let's try out the 16 by 16 anyway. And then, of course, you've seen these. If you've watched anything on my channel, you've seen these nano motors. Uh, still on the fence on these. I haven't really got an opportunity to really rip them hard or, you know, really go go at it because I know that one that I had was really bad it, it it would just you know separate I don't know which one it is but uh, iFlight actually did say that they would replace it and they did and I I give them a thumbs up for that they did replace it but this is an unboxing to see what's in here and some statistical data and some information on this uh, flight controller uh, in case you have any questions about it I can get the answers for you. So let's dig in a little deeper. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in for you so we can get a tight close-up look at what, what's in this box. Alright, let's open this... Uh Oh my. Look at that. Look at that little. I mean, it's just barely bigger than my thumbnail. <laughs> that is small. All right. Looks like we have quite a, quite a few capacitors here. I'm actually surprised how small this is. How many, how many capacitors they put on here? So that, that looks pretty decent. We'll have to see, of course, when we actually get it in the air. I'm interested because uh, it says the Flywoo says that they have a built-in LC filter on their flight controller. So that's that's pretty awesome, you know, if if that's true and if it actually works. Um, I'm kind of looking at some things here. So let's let's look at this. So. The, pretty tight tight up against the MOSFETs here but they're separated nicely so I shouldn't have too much of a problem got these motor wires here kind of see there's 26 gauge motor wires so maybe a little challenge to solder but I don't know I kind of I look forward to it so we have uh, positive negative uh, battery leads. We have our motor wires here. So we have one, two, three, and four. Pin header. I, I, I'm, I'll be honest with you, I'm not a fan of a pin header. It, it puts you in a position where you have uh, only one option, the option they've given you for the pin header. Uh, so when you pop them together your stack the distance between your stack is set like dude there's nothing you can do about it because that pin header has to be in a certain way so I, that's why I'm not a real big fan of pin headers um, they also in a crash they they break but that's the way this one comes so we're gonna roll with it so there's not a whole lot to talk about with the ESC as far as how to wire it because it's pre it's pretty much set. But I'm not seeing where you can... I don't see a pin out. So I don't think you can solder... You know, like, I don't think you can unsolder that and snap these off or whatever. So I think you're stuck with the pin header, which is fine. That's the way it is. Solder up your motors. Now, as far as the ESC, some statistical data. Um... They're saying this is a Bioheli S, 2 to 4 S. So they're saying it can handle 2 to 4 S. And Bioheli is good because you could do JESC or Jazz Mavic uh, firmware to do uh, RPM filtering. 
so that that should be good and then it's saying it's 13 amp so you know obviously times four so 13 amp um, is a pretty pretty fair I mean pretty generous I know that these these motors don't pull 13 amps um, so we should be okay running these and then they're actually boasting I don't know they didn't say how many seconds but they say this can handle 15 amp bursts so I'm assuming around three to five seconds of, of 15 amp so that's, that's pretty that's pretty hefty as for the thing that's yeah it's pretty small right um, and it's 2.5 grams Got a shunt resistor so we can get some accurate current readings in the ROSD. You know, I'm kind of a nerd. I kind of like that. So that, that's cool to see. I've got a handful of flight controllers and ESCs that don't have don't have much of that on. And they're well big enough to have it. So that's cool. So enough about the ESC. It's pretty, pretty basic stuff. Um, the flight controller. Let's see here. So if we're looking at the flight controller, that's the orientation. So the front, the back, right, left. Okay. OSD. And then we have our solder pads for everything else. And then there's LEDs on all four. That's kind of another reason I thought this would be fun to have is because of the LEDs that are built into it. You know, this, this thing is just going to glow glow outside the frame this thing is so small it's crazy I mean, I'll have to admit this let's zoom zoom really far in on this let's look, look at some of the solder work I mean you can see that the solder work is is pretty clean I sometimes I get aggravated when I I get a, a board and and the, the capacitors are sideways or you know like hang, barely hanging on you know, uh, but everything looks to be pretty, pretty tight. Kind of give it a good look over. Of course, you have your boot button here so you can update the firmware. Uh, no, that's not a barometer. This board does not have a barometer. This board is actually uh, 2.3 grams and it runs the MPU 6000 chip right here and it has 8 megs. I'm actually surprised they fit 8 megs of uh, black box data. You, you can uh, store up to 8 megs so that's that's kind of nice um, and then it can handle 2 to 4S. Alright so we have our LED data port here and then we have our buzzer and then we have our camera input so this is your your in so you have your camera and then you'll run your camera wire over to this one and they're they're saying that there's a 5 volt out right here with a ground so if you want to you can run your your camera off 5 volt and ground um, I'm not sure exactly yet if I'm gonna I'm I'm going to put the run cam nano on this because this is saying it has a built-in LC filter so I'm really interested to see if that's true in it and it actually filters if not I'm probably gonna run an external uh, voltage source for my camera and VTX so that brings me over here to the VTX lineup we have the ground for your VTX and then we have your uh, 5 volt so that's 5 volt out and then we have our video out so this video out will go to your VTX okay the next pad we have over here is our TX2 and our RX2 so this is a UART number 2 and then this pad is 3.3 volt in case your spectrum receiver needs 3.3 so it actually has a 3.3 out and then a ground and now over here on the other side we have our TX1 and our RX1 so this is our, our uh, UART1 
and then our receiver and it's saying this is this pad here is inverted so we can run our S bus to it and then 5 volt and ground for our receiver I'm gonna run an RXX, RXSR in this build coming up so I'm gonna run my RXSR off of here so I'm not sure I'm I was debating about F port and and I thought you know what I'm I'm not really needing these for anything else. I'll probably just end up wiring it um, straight up. I'll use all four of these pads here. So if you want, to, if you don't uh, have a receiver that has uh, inversion, then you can use this R1 pad. So this one here is inverted. Okay. Of course, we have micro USB. Oops. And your boot button. And let's go ahead and zoom out here. It's really nothing to look at on the other side. 5 volt regulator right there. So let's uh, let's plug this in. Let's put some juice to this and see what the LEDs look like. All right, before I do anything, powering up anything, I always make sure, you know, I don't have any continuity. So we're just gonna go to, if you hear, if you hear that, then that's, that's no good. All right, so we quickly went to overload. So that's good, the capacitor is charged, everything's fine. We're not, we're not hearing that. And then we're just gonna come through, check each point, okay? Now, we'll go ahead and plug our Plug our flight controller and ESC in together through this pin header. I probably won't separate them again for a while. All right, and now we're just going to check. Turn this baby around. I'm just going to go to the ground pad on on the ESC, and then I'm going to go to the ground pad on the flight controller, and we're just going to check. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the five volt. So nothing, that's good. Okay, so that, that should be good enough. And then you can also take it from the ground on the ESC. Okay, I'm down here on the ground pad of the ESC. And then go to the body of the USB. Okay, and then go to the, go to the positive pad on the ESC. And then come up here, see how it was quick, quick beep and then, uh, well, that's fine. That's all the filter, all the capacitors doing their thing and then see they're ready to go no continuity so if you have this when you're touching the positive pad onto that okay so now we know that you know that I don't do smoke stoppers so and I have my I have my 5 volt source here so we're just going to plug that in Turn that on. Oh, look at that. Look at the LEDs dance on that thing. That's, that's wild. That yeah, should be cool. We're going to chuck this into a build. So stay tuned on the channel. And uh, I'm excited to see what this is. Yeah. Seems like a lot of bling for me. I'm just, I'm not, I've never been a real bling person, but. So let's get a, uh, let's get a measurement stack height here. We're looking at a 12, so we're 12 millimeter from the top to the bottom there. And so if this is the front of the quad and this is the back, right, left, okay? So we're looking at a total, total uh, width uh, for the edge of this USB all the way to the other side of the ESC is 21 millimeters okay and now the front and back so overall with LEDs included 25 millimeters so if you're trying to push this into a small area so here's here's the tadpole see if I can get my big fingers out of your way so you can see what I'm doing here so that's the stack. Just the ESC and flight controller and the tadpole frame. So 
So that should be should be pretty cool. I'm kind of I'm getting excited here, to be honest with you. So underneath this foam, I guess I don't know what the cutouts are for, but other stuff they sell probably. Little silicon beads stay dry. I'm gonna go ahead and put these. I'm gonna go ahead and put this stack out of the way here. We're, we're kind of done with that for now. Uh, XT30. Not too bad. Obviously, you're gonna probably end up cutting that short anyway, depending on what frame you have. So, like the Tadpole three-inch frame, just give you an idea. They give you plenty of wire. <laughs> um, I'm not really a fan of how much solder they let wick down in here. I like I like them to be a little bit looser than that. So if I connect it to the frame right here, I'm not having to bend and twist to break in that. But that's not that's not too awfully bad. But you can see, there's it's it's soldered point is right there. And they've wicked solder all the way back to here, making this rigid. And then the wires want to break off in there right here. So it, it'll work. Um, what else did they give us? What a slippery little guy. So they give us uh, some hardware. Give us a capacitor. And just, just in case you didn't know, on a capacitor, that's negative. So the long one is the positive and the short one's the negative, just in case you didn't know. But they give us a 25 volt 220 microfarad capacitor. 105 degrees. Hmm. I'm we'll go ahead and use it. They give us an assortment of screws. They are metal. If you can hear that or not. They are metal and they are button head. Which uh, that's what's on the bottom of this frame is button head. So put one of these through. So looks like looks like a perfect length for this frame. So that's cool. They are M2. So looks like looks like we're gonna be rocking and rolling here. I don't have to use any of my stock. Uh, washer. The washer is plastic. And the nut is steel. Obviously the stack screw is steel. So I'm pretty stoked. That's that's pretty nice, you know, to have have all that. I don't know if you other guys remember, they used to not get anything. <laughs> so all right, cool. There's the there's what's coming up on the channel. All right, so let's go ahead and plug the flight controller into beta flight real quick here. I just want to take a quick look at it and get a version for you. Oh man, those LEDs are bright. There's like eight LEDs on this side to side, and then there's a red and blue next to the USB port. This thing, this thing is bright. Oh my goodness. So, I rotate the board to where it's, uh, I have the arrow on the silk screen on the board pointed directly to my computer. So, if I pitch back, I pitch forward, can you see that the, the quadcopter is kind of at an angle pointing off to the left? So I have the flight controller about as level as I can. You don't want to do the, calibrate the accelerometer here. Uh, because you're holding it in your hand if you set it down on a level surface then by all means But right now what you can do is point that arrow directly at your computer and Click here and that way it'll center it for you. So right left back forward back forward Okay, so we know we're we're communicating good Go to ports. I'm just curious two you arts. We already knew that they already set this up so yeah, the RX is uh, UART1 and then your tramp protocol for the, that's for their 16 by 16 whoop size, 20 by 20 size, like all three sizes in one VTX that they sell. 
which is a VTX 625 if you want to look it up. So it's all set up, pre-done for you. That's not. <laughs> so I'll have to download that. I'll have some information on this in the build. Um, let me see here. Configuration. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. But they do have... Uh, I tell you what, I'm curious to wonder what kind of firmware they have on the ESC. I'm going to have to look that up. Because they already have bi-directional D-Shot enabled on this flight controller. Which really surprises me. Number of poles, I'll have to count them. I'm pretty sure it's... I'm sure it's 12. Look, reversing the prob, so... Let's go ahead and get a CLI. And we're just going to check out what version they have. Uh, stock. I'm just curious. Wow. Daring 4.1 on this. Like I said, I hope I did everything I could to get the answers for you on that and uh, see what that thing's looking like. I uh, can't wait. So, if you uh, if you think this video helped you out and you liked it and you want to give it a thumbs up and subscribe, I appreciate it. If not, you give it a thumbs down it all works enjoy the breeze